Hello and welcome to MGP 566. I'm Kevin with me as ever, the Sheepdog Anna and Pab. Say hello, boys and girls. Hello, hello. Hello. And I'll apologise up front for if there is the sound of air conditioning in the background. It's 32 degrees in my office. I'm not turning it off. If you don't like it, come back in the winter. We have more content then anyway. I don't know. We do. <laughs> we have, there's, games, there's games that come out then. You lot talk about them all the time. Nothing comes out at this time of year, so you're all like me. Do you reckon they do come out, but before they get the games into the shops, they melt? Maybe. Perhaps they're made hey, of chocolate. Don't get me. This is why don't. we don't get Easter eggs in the summer, because they would melt. I, I was going to say, they, uh, they don't get them in game them. anyway these days, anyway. So. What, chocolate Easter eggs? No, games. I bet they're more likely to have chocolate Easter eggs in game than games yeah, these days. Probably. I imagine they probably do have them, because they have an early learning centre in there now. Do they really? <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> so, who, who knows what might be in there? Um, in fact, this is important information for those of us who decided we were going to go to fewer games conventions this year. Um, just as we stopped going to London so often, I went down to London last weekend and not o- within St Pancras Station, not only is there a Hamleys, which we already knew about, and a Fortnum and Mason, which we already knew about, they now have a breakfast club in St Pancras Station as well. If they could just oh. do the conventions in St Pancras, which, by the way, is the station I come into now, where we live these days, um, we could literally just go down to St Pancras, not leave the station, and do the whole of London. I guess they need a comic book shop in there as well. But, yeah, a breakfast club in the train station. With I, I, On my way home at the weekend, I just did my jam shopping while I was waiting for the train. Got I myself some jam, weekend. got a triumph of tortoises. It was uh, it was a wonderful thing. No need to traipse over to the jam shop anymore, folks. You can get it all at St Pancras Station, who, incidentally, are this week's episode sponsor. <laughs> yeah, we've got we that wish. station money now, have we? Yeah, aren't you supposed to be arranging a sponsorship? I thought you were the money man around here. When are we going to get some sponsorships on this podcast? Anytime I come to you with a sponsorship, you tell me you're already working with them you'll try and put the podcast <laughs> in your existing deal and then you seem to just i don't know keep I the negotiate myself more money yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> don't mention the podcast i remember yeah um well i'm not working with nordvpn anymore um so if you want to go back to them and try and get them on the podcast that way i can use that to try and get them back into sponsoring me again so that would be nice after after three long years everyone who watches my streams now already has it and that makes it much harder to sell so we've had to do a temporary parting of the ways because my conversion rate went down to basically zero because everyone already has it took Mm. three years to get there i mean on one hand i I guess that's for the best i don't work on commission so you know it's strung the deal up longer good work boys and girls but goodness me, how, who was the person who signed up after two years and 10 months of like, you know what? Yeah. The message just finally got through. I'm getting it this month. Does it count the ones where we renew them? Because I had mine due quite recently and I was going to just do it. And then I thought, oh, no, I better make sure that I go through the Kev code or whatever it was called. I think you, know, you the... have to use the code for yeah. the renewal, or else it doesn't count it. So I imagine that's part of the problem as well. Yeah. I imagine there are people who've just renewed off their own back like monsters. They're not thinking but, of your bottom line, are they? That's, I mean, no, exactly. I'm conditioned to. You You used to flog me until I thought of the bottom line. and Yeah, yeah. quite right too. So, yeah, you can get them in as podcast sponsors now. Um, I found an old K. We've been clearing out the cupboard under the stairs today in preparation for moving house. I found an old KFC baseball cap and T-shirt. So if they want to sponsor us, I've already got all the gear. So Anna, Anna loves it when I wear my KFC baseball cap. She's a big fan. I thought that was just your initials because your middle name is a swear word. Ha, exactly. We established, by the way, that Pab's middle name's Algernon. We're doing all the middle names today. I had to tell Anna what yours was. Yeah, we talked. We found out what Sheepdogs was earlier on before we were recorded. <laughs> Nobody knows what mine is. Have you yeah. seen the Twitter DMs? <laughs> I, well, evidently not, because I'm 20 minutes late for recording the podcast. Uh, I, I think I got it right. Let's see, let's see if I actually know Sheepdog's middle name. Check the Twitter DMs, young man. I feel like it's very important to know if I know your middle name or not. <laughs> Ooh, do I lie? Um, yeah, no, that is correct. Yes! Was it? I am a hero. Wow. There you go. So yours is also a swear word. 
very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My initials are, are um, yeah, if you say them too quickly, it's another swear word. It's very good. You're a monster. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the risk of saying what every podcast is probably saying this week, it's quite warm, isn't it? Poor old Anna is melting up in her Lego room. Yeah, it's that, not great. It doesn't have the luxury of uh, of air conditioning up there. It's very sad. Um, so Anna might be a little short with us. She's already uh, she's already told us off repeatedly. Things she she's saying already less than five foot tall. Um, no, she's exactly five foot tall. People weren't turning up on time, Kevin. I was here at two minutes. I know, I know you were. Even Pab was about a minute late. I was very disappointed in him. I had oh, to take, even know what day it was. I had to take his passport number off him and give it and register him for a load of products he doesn't want delivering to him. Is that what the number <laughs> it was? I thought that was him trying to count down from ten and just getting it wildly <laughs> wrong in the chat. No, we were pre-registering for our uh, our Le shuttle crossing for our little trip to France without Sheepdog. Our one hundred percent Sheepdog free trip to France. When is that? September. So, so you'll be doing a podcast getting... on your own that week. If you want I'll to line some, up some guests. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I don't know who, but I'll figure it out. Get Angry John on. It's probably been 15 years since he's done an episode. Does he still know what games are as he become proper old? I, think. I quite enjoy our annual chat that we seem to have now that we bump into each other at work. The one time I happen to be around the facilities and we have a quick chat about games and stuff. And I feel like it's... Uh, I, only, I only spoke to him six weeks ago, maybe eight go, weeks buy ago. Buy a Minecraft server off of him. He loves all that. That was his original thing, <laughs> bursting into the forum trying to sell us his Minecraft servers. I'm surprised we didn't ban him immediately. I tell you, if someone tried that on me now, they'd be straight. I was so <laughs> naive back then. We let him get away with that. Yeah, we were building a network of nerds, weren't we? Uh, now look what it's got. It's got you a job for 10 years off the back of him stealing advertising off of our forum. I see. It's the, it's the kind of person you're working with, uh, a, a monster who steals advertising. We should send him an invoice for it. I will send him an invoice for it. Don't worry about getting a sponsor. I've got a plan. <laughs> Do you know what? You've just made me think. I'm basically uh, somewhat in charge of marketing now. I might just see if I could just sponsor myself, uh, sponsor <laughs> the sponsor the podcast through our business, and That's an I'll put it to idea. him. I'd say so many great delivery. things. I, I tell you what, if, if they did sponsor us, I wouldn't accuse John of being a monster again. At least until after the sponsorship period. Then. He's not so, in a position to poo-poo it or anything anymore. So, uh, you know, mock him away. Um, well, do we all remember the time when he shouted at a teenager in a video game arcade? <laughs> Wasn't that a day? Were you there for that, Pappy? No, Probably I heard about it. He shouted at a kid. Yeah, everyone did. Mm. He shouted really loud. Me and Anna had to walk out. That was the first time Anna saw Buckingham Palace that day. Because we had to walk out because she was so embarrassed to be near him. That was a Awful. fun day. <laughs> hey, but after that, the, the the fun had been sucked out of the room. So <laughs> there you go. Send him this episode and say we'd like sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good sponsorship. We're and and come on as a co-host for a week. We've got two things to ask from you, and you could put a stop to all of this. It'd all be great. But uh, yeah, me and Anna have been very very busy. We officially pick up the keys to our new house tomorrow. So we won't be on the podcast next week because I won't have an office this time next week because it would have been put into cardboard boxes and not reassembled at the new place yet. Um, but holiday, the next so time you next week, well, Pab's going to get guests on. Maybe recruit Angry John, Pabby. You could just have defend a week himself. off. Yeah, get him on to defend himself. I'd like Pab to just do an hour's monologue. I think that'd be great. I can't. I can barely do fifteen minutes, let alone an hour. Well. I mean, I'll send you some talking points. I'll send you a list of questions. 20 questions with, with pork and beans. That's what next week's episode will be. Submit your questions at RB6K on Twitter and uh, we'll collate them and Pabby can then answer questions next week when he does his solo episode. It'll be great. We should just start like recording our segments on our own and then just meeting up for a quick 10-minute chat. If Pab just lines them up in order, it's the same difference. But if we did that, everyone would realise that I haven't had a segment for two years. Oh, no, yours uh, is the, this bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my bit relies on having you lot to talk to. I can't do my bit on my own. Well, I said that. We'd meet up for that bit and then sorted. 
You could you could or you could also just play some bits. You could squeeze them in. I have no, I'm not really right. Yeah. I'm, actually, I'm actually selling a load of gaming gear as part of clearing out my office. I've decided a man who hasn't turned a PlayStation on this year doesn't need to own two. So I'm selling one of my PS5s. I'm selling my Xbox because, again, I have a PC. I don't play games on either of them. I might even sell one of my Switches because, again, don't know that I need two, especially with a new one on the way when I don't play on any of them. So uh, yeah, this is this is me officially retiring from gaming. I got too old. I am still going to own a PS5 and a gaming PC and make daily YouTube gaming videos. So I'm not completely retired, but don't think I need to have a PS5 in every room I go in anymore. Don't think that's completely necessary. So like we need to sync uh, Football Manager. We need to like take Sports Interactive out and. Well, if you did that, I'd have to get a real job and I wouldn't be wasting my time with this nonsense if I had a real job that I had to go to. I do this. I do this because the rest of the week, Anna's the only other person I talk to. So I do this so that I have other people to talk to so that I don't completely <laughs> annoy Anna and have her murder me. You don't want to yeah. murder me, do you, Anna? I'm great. I feel like this probably winds Anna up as much as anything else you <laughs> because we turn up late and it's too hot. And <laughs> It's like 40 degrees in this room. My, yeah, mate. I'm, my glasses I'm... are slipping off my face just sitting here because it's that warm. I found... Well, when we were clearing out the bathroom earlier, we found the uh, the testicle cream that my dad got me for Christmas a few years ago. Maybe oh. cover yourself in that to stop yourself sweating. He got me... I mean, it's it's a rude name. It uh, begins with a B. Talking about testicles. Not ball. It's ball lotion. He got me a tube of ball lotion because it made him giggle, giving me a tube of basically testicle deodorant. And I completely took the wind out of his sails after I opened it and said, I've got loads of this stuff. I'm sponsored by Manscaped. Testicle deodorant isn't a hilarious product that I've never heard of. This is just an inferior version <laughs> of the one that I already use every day. My testicles have smelt like roses for years. And that ruined him. He wasn't very happy. He thought, he thought he'd got me such a you? hilarious present. Yeah, exactly. I sit on chocolates. Um, we spoke about getting developing a, an ice chair like six months ago, and we should have done that in preparation for this time of Who year. Who spoke about that on the podcast? It's probably when you have one of your holes in your uh, rear end. Um, I've still, I've got a massive hole in my rear end now. It's very sore, throbbing. Moment, absolutely throbbing. I'm sat on my egg pillow. But yeah, we were gonna get a chair you could fill with ice cold water to keep you cold, and we should have done that because Anna could have been sat on it right now. We bought an ice machine today. I could fill my egg pillow with ice from the ice machine that we purchased. We are the biggest mugs in the world. The hottest day of the year so far is the day we chose to buy an ice machine, probably for four times the price that ice machines normally are. And then Anna said, why have you set it up in this house? We move in a week. Why have you set the ice machine up here? Because I want ice today. I don't We've want got ice, ice in the freezer. Week. We've got ice in the freezer. I want good ice. We have got ice in the freezer from the same water you've used. This this machine can make me 15 kilograms of ice per 24 hours. You don't need 15 kilograms of ice. We've already got ice in the freezer. Well, now we're going to have, I'm going to, I mean, I'm obviously going to maximise the machine. So I'm going to be adding 15 kilos of ice every day to that freezer from now on. Why? We need to empty it. Yeah, it's gonna so that down. I can fill it with ice. You're just coming up with stupid ideas. Just stop it. Stop <laughs> I'm it. gonna start selling ice. Sell ice to the kids at the park behind our house. I'm not going to the park to just sell gonna... ice to children. <laughs> That's not happening. Kilogram of ice for a pound. They buy it as well. Have ice fights, kids. Like snowball I mean, fights, but with ice. Yeah, wow. you could probably crush it up and make it into snowballs quite quickly. There you go. We've got a new business, Anna. We're going to be selling ice. No, we're not. If you could find just one Eskimo who's like moved to the UK to get away from it all and sell him some ice. I've got that massive fridge freezer thing that I bought for my world record last year that I put all my beverages in that does have a freezer setting and a massive battery in it. I could set that to the freezer setting. We could fill that with ice, then put some ice creams and cold beverages in it. It's on wheels. I could wheel that from park to park selling ice creams and cold drinks to children. I mean, you could wheel that That's next to an Anna now and open the door idea. and she could cool down. Yeah, do you want a bag of ice, Anna? I could do you a kilo for 50p. Let me get this over so I can go into an air-conditioned room. 
<laughs> Suck up some ice cream. I'd be going on with your nonsense. I just can't bother. <laughs> yeah, I'm I... with you all day listening to your nonsense, and now I have to listen to your nonsense again. I just want to. You can tell out. she's exasperated with me. She hasn't even questioned why I got a mallet delivered today. I just a don't rubber care. mallet. A mallet. A rubber mallet. Yeah. Is it the one like a Timmy mallet replica or no? It's a it's a proper tool, a rubber mallet for assembling shelves that I've now arranged for someone else to come and assemble. But before I've got I one of them. That, I bought myself a mallet, so I oh, now have God. a rubber mallet that will just stay in its box because there's a man coming to assemble my shelves for me, so I no longer need the mallet. I might offer him use of my mallet, but is it? Will you take <laughs> a fiver off if I let you use my mallet? So there's no risk of damaging yours. The trick is to keep talking to them until they leave and leave all their cool tools behind. That's happened. I didn't intentionally do this either time, but twice we've had workmen around who have left like a decent hammer or whatever, a decent saw at a house. And I've messaged them saying, you've left your tool behind and have just not returned. So I'm slowly but surely building a, a decent tool set. Um, I have tried to get them back to them, but they just never took them. I mean, I'm not going to be able to distract them that easy. I'm not even going to be able to offer them a beverage unless it's an icy cold run out of my ice freezer uh, because we're, we're getting all the work done before we even move in. So there's not even going to be a kettle. Then take your fridge over with some water in. One of ice, yeah? And then I can offer him an iced beverage. See? It's already paying for itself. Oh, my God. Anna, can, we Anna, just, can we Anna, just... Anna, I'm Anna, Anna, not... Anna, I've just seen your text message. Why don't you go first, and then you can leave your hot room and go to bed? Why don't you tell us what you've played? We'll break, we'll break our, normal, our normal routine, and you can go first and then leave so you don't have to sit in the hot room for an hour listening to me talk about ice, which should be helping, quite frankly. Just the thought of ice should be cooling you down. It's the, 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 the you're just doing my head in with ice, ice, ice. <laughs> Baby. You set it in the wrong hat. <laughs> my word. Knew that was well, I've played absolutely nothing, so there you go. That's the end. <laughs> That's not true. I've seen you playing games. You were playing a game the other day. Not anything worth talking about. Well, just tell me what it was. Humour me. It I've just some... done 10 minutes on ice. Yeah, because you're weird. <laughs> I know. It was one of the Tomb Raider games. I'd been packing Which all one? day. I don't know. One of them. The latest New? one. One Maybe. of the ones where she had spherical boobs rather than triangular boobs, so it was quite a recent one. Uh, Shadow? So Shadow Pab of the Team Raider? That was all the description Pab needed. No, I'm thinking about the new ones are called, the latest Pab's one. Pab's like, right, it's that one. Possibly. No, think... There was a plane crash, so I'm guessing... Rise? Maybe. I, 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 is it, it's free, Rise, isn't, it? isn't that the first one of the new lot, and it starts with a no, plane no, crash? I don't, no, I don't want... No, that's the second one. I don't like. I don't. I'm not. I'm not on the wind island. I'm not on the snow tops. I'm on the next one. You, you got loads of. Is it muddy? Yes. That's shadow. Has he got the mud tech where you crawl through the mud and you get covered in mud? Yes. You're looking I'm for the old. city of Pai Tai Ti. I can't even Possibly. say that. Pytt. Sheepdog must have Wikipedia open. There's no way. I mean, yeah, I don't have it open. I have like um, a Google like summary <laughs> in the third Possibly, installment. I just wanted to put something on that I could easily download from my phone while I was packing because I was bored of packing, and then she I played it for two hours and played the opening again for like the fifth time, maybe. I just. It's too hot to put on it because the thing is, you put on an Xbox or a PlayStation, and they run so warm that mm. you can't. I can't. I can't stay in the. It's so. It's ridiculous because oh. our house is in the sun all day. There is no respite in this move. house. Well, yes, we should. There is no respite from like four in the morning when it's blazing through our bedroom. And then come in the evening, it's blazing through these windows. It's never ending, and everyone goes on. Oh, you want a, you want sun in your in your garden? No, I don't. I don't want anything. I just want, I just want shade, 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 and more. I hate, I hate, I can't. Well, this is I why we've got solutions for you for the new house. You'll have air conditioning yeah, I, I, in the I, living room. We're going to put the UV filters on the windows to stop the heat getting in. Yeah, but I'm like uh, stuck tin I foil up. These, um, these people who want to move into housing like oh yeah we have a self-facing garden why why does i mean if we had a self-facing garden we wouldn't have the problem we're having right now the problem what, is what do we our, have now well our windows are facing the sun right now so it sets in the worst is that right 
I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, rising. So out, out, these, win, yeah, west, these windows west. are facing directly west, which is why the sun's currently blazing right on them when it's low in the sky. So our garden faces east. So we don't, yeah, we don't have south, but it's just, yeah, that's why in the morning our bedroom window, which is the opposite side of the house, has the rising sun blasting into it. And then in the evening, when we're in these rooms, the sun's blasting in from this side. So it's just a stupidly rotated house. If Horrible. it turned 45 degrees, <laughs> it, would be, it would be bearable. But it just, whatever room we're in, that's the one the sun's currently blazing into. It all needs to swap. Check when they were planning it, they had a magnet near one of their compasses or something stupid. I imagine when they were planning it, they always planned for this to be one of the cheap ones. And the nice ones down the road are facing a different direction. <laughs> they are slightly. Yeah. Slightly These, just... we're, we're at the cheap end of the street. We've got a flat, we've got flats one side of us. We're properly at the we're at, at the point where the houses transition into flats. So we're definitely at the cheap end. That's why we're facing this way. That's yeah, horrible. I think I said before I live at the great bit where um my house is facing all of the wealthy people's houses and their houses are facing mine. <laughs> oh, so at Christmas, I get, face see, the sun for you. I get to see all their decorations and stuff and they get to see the half-hearted stuff that I put up. Um, I don't know. I can't see the sun because my blinds are closed because I prepare my windows to avoid the sun. Um, oh, so God, I've no got idea. blackout curtains up and they're still not helping. Tinfoil. I'm not going to put tin foil. UV filters is the way forward. I was looking into it. UV filters on the window not only will protect your Lego, but will also reduce the heat energy by something like 25% and actually makes it into the house. So it'd be great in the summer, not so great in the winter. It will be colder Turn in the winter around. because of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works quite like that. Take well, it open the outside. Open, it on, open the door to let the sun and the snow in. <laughs> uh um, that's when you put duvets on your windows. It's all, you know. I guess that's when you just put the heating on. It was on most people do, yeah. But um, yeah, I've not, I've not really put on anything. I said I was going to play that Mario game. I haven't picked up my Switch. Mario it's game. on charge. Yeah, the one that came out with like an RPG kind of. I, I had it. Your door on. Yeah, not played yeah, it. Yeah. Yet. Yeah, it's still there, but like Kevin said, we're packing up. Stuff. I mean, you've packed so, all your games now, haven't you? So anything my that's games not already not in my, your PlayStation. <laughs> that's why I had to download a game. Yeah, everything <laughs> else is packed at this point. I have this game on disc. I just, I'd already packed it away because I'm doing... Kevin goes, what, oh, did you, that... did you buy it or did you... No, it's free. Oh, I was going to say, that that would be mental. But Kevin's like, oh, don't start on the easy stuff. Do all this stuff first. So I did. And now I've packed all my games away. Every single one of my games. So, well, yeah, I that means you're not going to forget. Yeah, but now I have to do my cupboard, and that means oh, I just, I just need this. I need next week to be this week because I, I just can't bother. Every time you went to the tip today, I just went and laid down because I can't bother. <laughs> to what? I hate I, this. This this temperature just well pulls the life where, out of me. This is where we need these two to convince you not to be so precious about your belongings and let someone come in and pack them for you. No. I mean, yeah, you are making your own yeah. problems there. Um, they, they, well, don't, they, they don't know what needs to be chucked away, do they? They wouldn't care. They'd just pack it all and carry it across. Um, um, if it makes you feel better, while you were lounging around feeling sorry for yourself, I was having a camera inserted at me, uh, not that you thought to ask how it went. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, so my day wasn't any better than yours. Well, let me, I, let, I love let having me. a camera inserted at me. <laughs> it's one of the highlights of my year. Well, that to be fair. I haven't got any kind of hilarious Kev stories to go with that, but uh, everyone who I spoke to in advance of that is a big crybaby. It didn't hurt at all until right near the end when he couldn't get around a bend and he just started basically elbow dropping it into me um, while somebody was like leaning on my stomach and someone else was basically kicking me in. Um, it's because you've got a naturally very loose bum hole though, isn't it? <laughs> and at that point, I kind of took a little gasp with the gas in there and thought, this stuff's useless. It doesn't do anything. I actually think she might have forgot to put the gas in with the gas in there, and I was just gasping on air because genuinely, that stuff's useless. I, 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 is there a thing where people somehow Perhaps she misunderstood your accent and you thought you asked for gas in air rather than I gas said to in me, air. Uh, "Do you want us to knock you out, or do you want the gas in there?" And I was like, "Look, everyone's told me the gas in there is great. I don't really want to miss out on that. Um, hook me up." 
and that's probably why she didn't give it to you oh he says he's really looking forward to <laughs> nah. the strong drugs i that's didn't work like that any. um but no i was just like no nah, i've been told it'll be fine and then uh i don't know what i felt like i was trying to make them think that i was fine and chilled and whatever and i'd be i'd be fine with it and then they asked me how i am with needles i was like yeah no problem with needles and then when they put the cannula in I got that, you know, when I'm at, when I arrive at events like Comic Con and I suddenly go all like really hot and messy because I've just, it's like a post stress thing that happens for me, where it's like I've held it together through the whole journey and got to somewhere and then I have a little fall apart because I've held it in throughout. That happened as they finished doing all of that, and so they thought I was getting all upset about this needle or the procedure, and I was like, no, this just happens. Like I'm actually fine, and they're taking my uh, blood pressure and that, and they just wouldn't accept that I was fine. They made me go and lay down. They they wheeled me on a bed through past everyone, even though everyone else had left the room on foot and walked there, and uh, I got treated like a bit of a baby. <laughs> but when we were in there, yeah, everything was fine. They just uh, went and did it and just lay there and then that's that's kind of why i've been a bit out of it all day because i come home and just been sleeping and lounging around i didn't realize it was wednesday or that i had the podcast and <laughs> it was seven o'clock um but yeah back to you anna uh well anna anna was so horrified with your story she's just got up and left and said she'll, <laughs> come, she, she'll come back to say goodbye at the end of the podcast fair enough i did wonder i wasn't sure i suddenly thought anna was anna was supposed to be leaving at this point um, yeah as soon as you started she sent me a text saying i've gone let me know when you're nearly done and i'll come back and say goodbye <laughs> well, <laughs> so. no, i don't blame her when she, she rang me um, i actually hung up because i knew she was going to be angry <laughs> um, I, that's how i knew that, that i was late for the podcast anna rang um but yeah game wise i have played a game I haven't played before um, and I'm hoping that you haven't bloody talked about this before Pabby because if you have I'm getting sick of this uh, no I'm joking but um, my son came to me and he asked me if I could get him a game and when I looked at it it was a 16 so I was like and I had a quick look at it and it's like um, action adventure but then it had like strong violence <laughs> and I was like what is this like I, no like you're not old enough for this sort of game and um he described it to me and i was like well i need to check it first and uh he was basically so uh, you probably heard of it it's called who's your daddy who's your daddy yeah That's so is this my daddy. is this a game it is a game on xbox it's also on steam um basically the idea of the game is that you can either play as a baby or a daddy and in from there the baby is trying to kill itself at all costs and the dad mm -hmm. is trying to mm -hmm. stop it from dying at all costs. And it's like multiplayer. So you can play up to seven people. Um, so I had a kind of crack at that and then he's been playing it all week uh, because he just thinks it's hilarious. So um, you can be crawling around and there'll be a shard of glass on the floor and you just have to get to it and eat it before the dad picks you up. <laughs> um, you can just knock over a candle and then try and set fire to the area you're in. Um, all sorts of stuff like that you eat a, a little creature that's jumping around or yeah you just generally if you can find it you can probably hurt yourself with it and meanwhile there's just exasperated parents running around being like trying to pick you up and get the to get the glass out your mouth or burp you or put you in a playpen to keep you safe and uh yeah you just have you just have a bit of a free-for-all in the sort of arena the house or there's like a baby sort of like it's like a daycare thing um it was genuinely quite funny like i was quite because it's not a super like it's not quite finished it says on oh, it's a game it's a work in progress um will change over time but um yeah it was one of those it swept his, his schoolmates uh they're all kind of like get it get it you'll love it and um it's currently on offer as well like it's it was eight pound normally it's 239 at the moment and um it's just one of those yeah it just I've had a couple of goes where you just fire it up and you you just get in and, and play and other people will try and catch you or you've got to try and catch other people. Um, he's been sat there playing with his mates doing just different rounds on it. Um, it. Them calling it strong violence and so forth, you don't like see a kid put glass in his mouth and bleed or anything like that. It's literally just got like a um, it's like a health countdown type thing, a health score, uh, I think like a breathing score and i can't remember what the other one is off the top of my head but there's like three scores that can go down so when you eat the glass your your health score starts declining um like one point at a time until the dad gets the glass out of you um other things will hurt you in bigger chunks and that kind of thing but yeah it's, it's a little bit of a dark game theme but it's done in a very cartoony 
um I can't remember the name of the engine now off the top of my head, but you know, like that kind they all look the same from that engine, a bit like Hello Neighbor and that kind of thing. They're all built in a kind of asset box type thing. Um from the likes of uh Unreal and um oh, I've forgotten the name, my brain's just gone. But you know what I mean? They just they just got one of those engines together and built a game in it and a unity, that was what I was thinking of. Uh so stuff like that. But anyway, um Okay. Yeah. Can I can I say something about this? Go on. Um Talked about it three months ago. So, <laughs> this game came out in 2015. Ah! On Xbox, it came out more recently. But go it, on. Yes. Uh, you got us codes for this game. In Did I actually? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. But none of us played it then. <laughs> um, I, I knew of it. I'd seen many videos on it. Um, but obviously, it does require people to play it. And nobody really wanted to play it other than me. But I can't play it alone. So, I uh, never... I never ended up playing it. I was just baby without a daddy. <laughs> oh, poor fab. <laughs> or vice versa. I could have been a daddy without the baby. When we go to Disneyland, I'll be your daddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> we'll play this game together. Surely it's the opposite you... way around. Do you know yeah, what? Yeah, you have to stop me from doing anything irresponsible. Yeah, drinking the water. Up. You've oh, suddenly the brought water. back. I'm drinking the water off of every ride. Don't oh, you even think goodness. about stopping me from doing that. It's delicious. It's the best water in the world. I'd forgotten. Um, I I felt like when he showed me it, I'd heard of it and I wasn't sure why. And then I just thought, eh, it could be the you know, it's a it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger quote from uh, that film, Kindergarten Cop. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the moment you said that, I I think I'm just checking my email now to see whether I've got the the email they sent because I remember getting an email with that as the subject and thinking, what on earth? Um, but that's quite funny that yeah, you remember. Did you search for that? Or did you remember that we got it? I knew it done it because I I knew of the game, but like I say, it requires people to do it. And for whatever reason, one day you came it came about you. You said we've been offered codes for this. Do we want it? Do we want it? And I was like, yeah. And then you you got us all codes. It wasn't even like you just got me a code. You got four codes. I imagine I sometimes responsible when I almost certainly would have responded with no, thank you. <laughs> I always <laughs> yeah. respond really politely. <laughs> yeah but no um that's funny we should definitely well, what what that teaches us then is that we do get offered decent fun little games that would be good for like a at least a, a one go um and yeah i i have enjoyed it it was fun it, it was good and pab if i can find that code because i'm not paying for it twice <laughs> i'll get it on my computer I mean, on steam i got it on steam yeah. i think so yeah, yeah i'm sure i've got the code somewhere apparently um the only other thing that i've really done in anger with gaming was uh so my son started getting into pokemon go again and said to me uh, i told him there was a lucario raid day last weekend uh mega lucario was added to the game and he asked me if i'd get him the premium ticket for it I thought, yeah, that'll be like eight raids or something. We can do that. We ended up doing 20 raids with that ticket. I mean, it was good value, like bloody hell for a fiver. Um, it was 20 raids, double ex- uh, three times the XP, sorry, uh, double dust and something else, and it had a special move. We left the house at like 12 and didn't get back until about half three. I'd spent over three hours uh, doing raids with him, which is really nice. We had a good time. Um, I was a bit miffed at the end because... The last two that we did, I said to him, look, we've got two more, and then we're going home. I'm a bit tired now. And he was like, yeah, same. I want to go home. And then we went in the raid, and he put in... Well, I sat there going, what? Like, normally we're killing these quite quickly. What's going on here? I look in the background, and he's chucking out, like, the most pointlessly pathetic Pokemon. And I was like, what are you doing? What's that, What's that like, uh, Beedrill doing here? And he was like, oh, that's my sacrificial Beedrill. And I was like, well, why is it in this raid we're desperately trying to do to get home? And he was like, oh, I just thought it'd be funny to throw it to its death. Like, you throw it into the raid and see what it does. And I was like, please sort your team out. And the next raid we did, I'm noticing even smaller Pokemon. I was like, why are you, do- why are you-, why are you trolling me here? Why are you trying to kill me here? Like, you know I des- I'm desperate to go home. Um, so I came home a little bit tilted. But uh, on the last one we did, I ended up getting like a 98% shiny one or whatever, something like that. It was a really good... Uh, pull on it as it were so yeah it was worth it but god um i feel like i mean i know it's summer so it's always better in summer this game but i do ebb and flow with it where like uh, uh, every once a year i'm like oh i'm getting sick of this now i don't want to play it anymore and then suddenly i'm like oh i quite like it again now they're not annoying me anymore and uh, this was one of those examples where it actually felt like it was a good ticket it was a good thing to play um, i think it is just better when he wants to play with me we've been playing 
stuff together a bit more because obviously the holidays is about with me more. Um, I got him watching Malcolm in the Middle. Do you remember that? We started watching it on Disney Plus. Mm. And he's loving that. Um, yeah, it's been nice. It's been, I've been enjoying having him about. But uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've played anything else worth talking about. I keep meaning. I haven't put my PlayStation on in weeks and i keep meaning to fire it up and just find something um i've got god of war on there i need to play um i haven't i only played a tiny yes. bit of suicide squad uh kill the justice league um not i didn't make much progress with that um i need to start thinking of birthday present games other than boulder's gate which i'm looking to get um i i have a question for you actually i was gonna i was thinking i should get it on pc and then someone I know is playing it on PlayStation and said, while it's not as good, they prefer it because they can play it on the sofa in front of the telly. And I thought, yeah, that's a big deal for me too. When, when my wife goes to bed, I'd like to just fire it up and, and play it. Um, have you played it on console? You got it on PC, didn't you, before? Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah Steam Deck. It run, Steam runs fine on that. So it certainly uh, controller controls are absolutely fine on it. Okay, cool. Because concern, I've been, I've played through the whole thing on the Steam Deck. Cool. I'll get it on PlayStation. And perfect. That's the only other thing I wanted to check. Um, I need to figure out what else I want to get for my birthday in that regard. It's that time of year where I don't know, and I need to decide. But um, get a Steam Deck. Then you can play would, it on that. Problem solved. I would never play it. <laughs> I would never use a Steam Deck. It's the most useless. It's not a me thing for me. For you, it is, but for me, no, not at all. Um, I just love to 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 play while pooing. It's my favourite thing. That's when I play Suica game, which I'm purposely not talking about because I'm still playing that all the time. Fair enough. So what have you been doing, Pab? Me? Mm. Um, not a lot. Not a lot, really. Um, like you say, it's one of them times a year where there's not a ton going on and a, a DLC for my favourite game from two years ago has come out and it's kind of just it's the only thing I'm really doing um I think I've got I've not got I think I've got I've not I've I've got to the final area of the game um I haven't got to the bo- final boss I haven't got it's not it I've basically just hop skipped and jumped around the map and found myself at the final area I have there's many things I haven't done. Um what have I done this week in Elden Ring? My my week in Elden Ring. Uh I beat uh the putrescent knight who was in a That's place a What an was, excellent name that is. Yeah, he was in a place called the Fissure. Um That's what I've got in my bummel. Oh. You got a putrescent just, knight I, there. I've got I I've got a, I've got a fissure. I am pleased to know that sheepdog. It's a very painful yeah. thing that I wouldn't wish on anybody. Makes it feel like your sphincter's constantly just vibrating a little bit. I mean, my, mine is <laughs> It's anyway. like an overcooked piece of calamari. <laughs> the fact I mean, that he got the camera in so easily means that I know there's nothing wrong with your bum old uh, sphincter-wise, because that's why mine grips so tightly. Mine's basically got teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can I be like Anna and just... Come back when when you when we're ending. <laughs> uh, I've I've got we've got a six hour drive coming up in like a month's time, Pabby. I've got so much to six tell you hours? about. Six hours. Well, it's spread over two days. We've got like two or three hours to get down to Folkestone, I was and then two say, or three hours to get to Paris. I, I I saw a video the other day. I got suggested a video of uh, taking the the Eurotunnel to Paris, and it told me about three hours. And you said six hours, and I was like. Yeah, well, we've got to get to France first, Pav. That's yeah. how travel works. Yeah. When you said nice. it's spread, I thought you were meant your butt, and I was like, no, I let it away from the mic. Hey, like, did you feel like you were pooing yourself when they pulled the camera out? That's a weird sensation. <laughs> or have you just got no feeling on your anus at all? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I could, yeah, I could feel it. I felt I, like I was doing a really big poo that I couldn't I stop. managed to, like, move in a way that I just... Like I, I positioned myself in a way that I was just kind of like, eh, it's not as much of a problem. Um, so it was fine ultimately. You inflated but... like a balloon now. Every is every well, rattling the walls. Everyone told me that was that I was gonna like 
shatter windows but i haven't even like released anything so i'm thinking i don't know maybe they had a better machine i swear you've not got a proper seal down there it's probably all just leaked out immediately <laughs> i need i'm gonna need to see uh i'm gonna need to have a closer inspection of your anus at some point i think i need to see you know, you're gonna watch the there. footage i tell you what yeah. it said it was very was loopy. It streamed it was very what loopy as in that sounds that sounds interesting he said he some said people was very clean some well no mine was clean but he said some people was go up sideways and down and that's it and some go in like a chaotic labyrinth of imagine loops. yours being one of the chaotic ones how out of character i know I, well at the moment he's you know you know when someone says something and you're like you like you've done it now doctor like suggesting that hopefully i'll be the more conveniently uh positioned patient like you don't know what you're in for and yeah at the end he was literally just like that was hard work <laughs> he was like that was a challenge um they've got to do a ct scan to finish the job because yeah he just got lost because they've left half the tube in there you gotta find out where it is i am working i'm trying to work out how on earth his last photo was a picture of the camera itself I don't, I don't care that's when he sent the uh the shrunken down team in a little spaceship to go and find yeah. the original camera <laughs> it just was like right at the end he was like right one more picture to do and then i looked at this camera the screen and i was like well that that's the camera how of what <laughs> like, what are you doing so i need to inquire about that one i forgot to ask when he came in at the end how on earth he did that um i think he was just trying to do a trick shot I don't, I don't know what he was playing at. Like, it felt like he'd, he'd finished the job and he was like, okay, I've got a few minutes on the clock. I'll just have a bit of fun here. Um, add this to my collection. I'll fire it off to the forums and win some points for, you know, it's the end of July. So he's probably thought, right, right in the end of the July, I'll win the July colonoscopy photograph of the month for this shot. Um, yeah, I don't know how he did it. Magician. Um it probably turned out he wasn't even a doctor. I've probably done some back alley thing here. Um, He's perhaps um, the same guy who'd started fondling my balls when I went in there for uh, something entirely unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I did think I was going in there to have me, uh, my teeth inspected. He's supposed to be a dentist. but um, Did I play any games? Are we just... Yeah, I, I was going to say, we were, we were talking about um, the putrescent night. <laughs> Yeah, and the then you fissure. mentioned you had an anal fissure, and I said, yeah, so do I. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I've also beat um, the centipede boss. Uh, like Sheepdog's Doctor did today. Carry yeah. on. Um, yeah, I beat that boss as well. Um, so I'm making my way through these these bosses in the game. Um, there's a, as it called, I think it's a place called the Abyssal Woods, um, which... My friends desperately want me to go into, and I keep going, no, no, no. Because they know something, that they've been through it, and they know what's in there. Just, they're just waiting for my reaction to it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going in then. There's no point. And I, I said to them, what's in there? And they're going, no, it's this, this, and this. I don't need to go in there then. I don't need these items. It's not a, vi it's not a vital place to go. Um, so we'll see. Um, yeah, I do, I do just kind of find myself just wandering around, seeing what's going on. I've not even, I've kind of given up the, the, the like YouTube videos of all different items and different things. Cause it's not, I don't, I feel like there's not, I'm going to, I'm going to get told I'm wrong for this, but I don't feel like there's anything that different in there for me. You know, there's nothing new. There is, um, there's a fawns, uh, spell, which I got and it is, it is the, the most broken spell in the game right now and it'll get changed at some point because it is broken i did get that one a spell that like shoots fawns like like a load of like um vines covered in fawns like travel across the ground and shoot up at the, the enemy and it it wrecks people um so you've just got to be able to take have your mimic or your spirit ash take aggro just enough time for you to get some of them off sort of thing to get the spell off and yeah, so I've been primarily using that and my my usual ones, that like the the bow and arrow spell and the comet spell that I pr predominantly use. So you have, have the sword as well. The ice sword is very good as well. Um, yeah. What else have I been playing? Um, I've started a game. I saw some people play playing this game called Contract Phil. Um. 
It's kind of like House Flipper, but it is co-op. So you can have up to four people, I think, playing it. And I think it's a bit... I don't... I've not really played tons of House Flipper. I've played probably more House Flipper at EGX when we played it, Kev, than I have actually played real House Flipper. That's the only time I've played it. I enjoyed it very much, but it's the yeah. only time I've ever played that game. Yeah, My I kids did were well. playing it loads when we were at Centre Parks. They're really into it. Yeah, it's it's quite... I think there's there's like some sort of like meditative zen state you can kind of go into it. It's very calming. You just kind of just knocking walls down, painting some walls, up, putting some tiling down or what have you, and going on. A, but I feel like the house flipper is just like you get a house that you, 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 you renovate sort of thing and you move it on sort of thing. And then, whereas this one, you kind of, there's like a big open world map and you you get given jobs and you go to houses and then they want certain rooms doing. And then you go and then you just like... You, it gives you like a speck of what they want. So you have to go to the hardware store, get the goods, put it in your little, you have a little free wheel, like tuk-tuk van. It's like a little, it's a little tiny free wheel van. And you put all your goods in the back of it and then you take it to the place and you do the job and then you put everything, you know, what they want it. And then you move on to the next job. And then the next job, I've only played like about an hour of it, but it's, it seems quite, fun like it's it I've, I've been to my next job is an, an advanced one in the sense of they now want the whole room doing and i've got to buy furniture and stuff like that so now i'm i'm on like i'm in the shops buying like wardrobes and beds and stuff like that for them and like they have a spec saying they want this this has, has to be like a two-star bed this has to be a one-star and you just go through like the what the the goods they've got in the shop and it's like you see what the, what like rating they are and you pick them all up, and you, you put them all in the back of your van. They had to make two trips for this because there was a lot of, lot of stuff here to collect. And then you go in, and you start doing the flooring, doing the walls and stuff. But there's also, like, optional ones in the houses. Well, I've noticed. I've not done them yet. But there's, like, optional, like, sort of side quests of it. You can do the rest of the house up as well. So you can add uh, the house, like, they wanted some more radiated or something. So you had to then go and get radiators and then put a radiator in. But I was like, I'm not doing that stuff. I came, I got offered this job to do this one room. I'm doing this one room. I'm not doing the rest of your house while I'm here. One of them things where you, you, go, you go to do a job and then they're just going, while you're here, just, can you just have a look at this? And you're like, no, no, no. I'm here to do this job. I'm, I'm not doing any bits on the side for you. But you probably will get more money for doing that. Um, but yeah, it just seems like a fun little game that could be fun in co-op. Um, so we'll see. It's an early access, so there's probably like other things that's coming for it. It's like I think it was, I think it was like fifteen quid. Well, it wasn't that expensive. Um, so yeah, we'll see. That one seemed quite promising. Um, and the only other game I've played is a, it's a short, like sort of story based game. It pretty much is. It's a narrative story based game called Click Holding. Is that right? That looks, that sounds right. Yeah, click holding. Um, and um, the story starts where you're in like, I presume it feels like uh, you're in a hotel room. It's weird, this. It's weird. It, let's start off. It's a weird game. I saw, I, I saw some, like, people talk about it online and stuff like that, but the, the buzz about it sort of like, Thing, got to see what this game's about. So I was like, okay, it's like it was like two pound fifty. But okay, the game's about took about what forty five minutes, I want to say. And you start up, and you're in a hotel room, and there's this there's this guy in the corner room sat in a chair, and he's paying you however much money. He it's like fifteen grand, is it, or something like that? I want to say fifteen grand, and he wants you to to. You have, and then you suddenly look down, you've got a clicker in your hand. You're like uh, one of them counting, what do they call them? Little clicker machines, what they're called. Clicker machines, I, mean, I think. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. You know the ones they're that like... you click them and a the number goes up on them? Yeah, I think they are just clickers, aren't they, for dog training yeah, and stuff? Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. But it's, like, it's got a number on it. It's got like a, people have them for like um, events and stuff, don't they? But anyway, so you've got one of them and you've just got to click it. And this guy just occasionally talks to you, just, tell, just telling you stuff. He's a weird looking fella. 
I think he's got a mask on, I think, based on what the story I was listening to. Like you say, he was telling me. He look, looks like a... Um, he looks a bit like a Muppet or something creepy looking initially, and you find out he's got a mask on. So you're like, okay, so he's just a normal dude. Um, and you just, you're just clicking his clicker away, and then occasionally you're like, stop. Now go over in the corner and do it over there. And then he'll talk, tell you, now put the TV on and do it, over, do it while the TV's on. And it's just weird. It's just weird, creepy game. And basically, you've got to get to 10,000. And then the game ends. I think they said that really early on that the the, the clicker resets at ten thousand. Um, and I I don't know if there's any save state in it because I feel like every well I try to have thought well what happens if I try and leave? You know, and if you leave, you'll reset. No, went, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not. I'm I've, I'm halfway through this. Now. I'm not stopping. Um. So yeah, so I I did finish it. I got it all done. Um. But the thing that was like say so yes, this week has been hot, hasn't it? Here in the in the UK, it that's is, the thing. It's been warm. It's been yeah. warm. Oh, something just fell off my shelf somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the the U the UK has been warm this this week, and this game, there's no settings in the game. There's no, the settings are like subtitles and pretty much that's it. There's no graphical settings, so there's no way of me. The, the game is running probably as as high as it'll run and is running two hundred and forty frames a second. So it is running the computer is running boiling up. And there's no way of me stopping it. There's no way of me, you know, you know, changing the settings or anything like that without me essentially if I quit it'll reset it. I was like, I'm not resetting it. I'm not resetting my counter. I'm I'm going through this trying to get to the end. So I endured this like it was just a real it was like a real kind of challenge in itself because I and like you move around I don't even think there's controller support for this. I think it's just literally you move around with WASD and you click by just either clicking the mouse or tapping the space bar. And you can like you can click it slow. You can you can just hold the mouse button the the mouse button or the space bar button down and it'll just it'll just click. It just clicks slowly. But you can just mash the buttons and click really fast and move through them. Um yeah, it's just it's just weird. It's 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 probably if you if you it's it's, it's a weird experience. It's 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 you could go and watch someone someone do it if you wanted to watch someone play it because it's like forty five minutes long. But it's also like two minutes fifty. So if you wanted to experience something weird like that, then you could. Um, and I did experience it, and I melted in here doing it because it was just cooking my computer it was the hottest i think my computer's ever been for a game that was like 1.5 gig and it isn't a massive graphics powerhouse it's, it looks fine but it's nothing amazing but it just ran super hot at 240 frames per second which i don't think my computer's ever done that before i don't i don't have anything run that hot like no you know fps wise i don't have anything running that uh, that high so yeah other than that that is it oh no no that's a lie that is a lie. Oh, I'm Pat, playing... you said that was your last game. I got Anna back. Well, I'm, that's she, well, Anna can hear me furious. talk about. Anna, Anna can going, hear about I'm, me. I'll go back to my room. I mean, I'm literally going to be um, two no, minutes. It'll, it'll be two minutes, I'm only Anna. Stick you around. About, then you I'm can only say telling goodbye. you about my mm. the fact that I'm I'm playing Rocket League again just to get a cyber truck. Wow. <laughs> the cyber truck's in Fortnite and in Rocket League now, but you have to do challenges to, to get it. Um, so far, the challenges have been pretty much just play games. So I've been just monotonously playing casual games with what feels like toddlers. Um, and I'm not I'm not ruling myself out of that age bracket either of skill level because I've I'm just as bad as the, the, the people that I'm playing with. Um, but you have to just do challenges. And the fort I was like, I was just playing Fortnite. The Fortnite one is bemusing because I don't know what it wants me to do. So that's why, because mm. if you if you get the get you get the car in Rocket League, you also get it. In, you also unlock it in Fortnite, and vice versa. If you unlocked it in Fortnite, you would get it in Rocket League because they're owned by the same company and so on and so forth. Oh, they do. really? Yeah, they're very much twinned together now. Because so every time oh, yeah. I I get the when I get the the Fortnite crew crew subscription that I have every month, I I get the Rocket League Battle Pass as well as well as the Fortnite Battle Pass. So 
I always have the the Rocket League Battle Pass now as well for for doing that. So yeah, so hopefully, like I say, I, hopefully it's nothing insane that I have to do to get this silly car. That I have to do something like where it's like actually actually be good at the game rather than just turning up and just r- driving around for a bit, because that's all I've been doing. I've not I've not got any better at it. I'm still awful. So uh, we'll find out next week if I actually get the cyber truck or if if uh, it's become a real skill based challenge that I have to do and I've I've given up. Um. Yeah, that's your lot. That's your lot. Well, with that, boys and girls, we will wrap things up there. If you would like to pester us on the internet, you can do that at MGUK Podcast, or you can follow me at Lelujo. And I'm at RB6K. I miss Lelujo. And I'm at Pab1986. And Pab will see you next week for a one-hour-long monologue about that oh, yeah. truck thing that he was just talking about. No, and we'll listen intently Pab? as we move house. Yeah, Pab's Q&A. Don't forget to tweet at Sheepdog. <laughs> Bye bye, or boys have, and girls. Have, have a good week. Thanks, Lesty folks. Bye bye. Did Anna say it's, goodbye? Yes, I did. It's like a hot box in here. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, are we still doing byes? Bye. <laughs>